it's special in a way that we'll, we're trying to, uh, to help an industry that uh, today are consuming a lot of uh, fossil-based energy for, for uh, high temperature heating and uh, fossil-based carbon to, uh, as reductant. Uh, and this is sort of uh, what, what we're tr trying to do here is to, um, to uh, roll out technology towards sort of the metallurgic industry to help them decarbonize their operations. Uh, and it's sort of a creating a vehicle to, uh, to produce uh, biocarbon and syngas, uh, CO2 neutral syngas, to, uh, to help them decarbonize. And that, of course, that is sort of a, a huge demand we, uh, we see that that, that the industry has. Yeah. Uh, Paul, uh, you're doing this, uh, this at Follum here in Norway. Uh, can you tell us a bit about the venture? Yeah, Follum is an exciting site. Uh, we have an old historic uh, industrial site uh, with the paper industry used to ha handling huge amounts of biomass. Uh, and that's a perfect location for us for, for our biochar plant. We, we need huge amounts of this biomass uh, and uh, it is in excess in Follum. And Equally important is the need for heat. They have a nice district heating system there, so they could benefit from the heat we produce uh, when we produce the biochar. Yeah, because you have you have the infrastructure already in place. The infrastructure is there, so you just tap into the industrial site as is. They have plenty of space, they have plenty of biomass, uh, and they have the infrastructure to benefit from the heat. So this is the old economy meeting the new economy because there was a uh, norske skog was uh, at volume before yeah sure and and now less paper uh, more biochar that is uh, sort of the future uh, so i think that this is a, a good opportunity we have the railways we have uh, huge sites for for landing uh, forest biomass and we are in particular interested in the the waste from from the forest industry mm. uh, and also on uh, on demolition wood mm. so so we have all the actors in place. Uh, Lindum is managing uh, the waste timber, uh, which is a, a nice feedstock for us. And, and Viken Skog, the forestry owner, will then come with, with uh, forest residues that we could benefit. Yeah, because the, cause the waste wood, that is really important there. Because uh, usually it takes eight years, doesn't it, uh, before a tree is... Uh... We, we need to use waste. Exactly. Uh, we, we don't uh, just cut down uh, the forest for, for this biochar production. We mm. use waste, side streams that otherwise would rotten. Uh, we, we could uh, really benefit from that type of carbon. So we also solve a problem because it just lies around it. Yeah, but it's, it's of course uh, always a, a matter of cost. Mm. Uh, how uh, much will it cost to bring the waste in? So, uh, and there is Follum a nice uh, site because mm. they could handle huge amount of mass efficiently. Yeah. Yeah. I think that you know, just looking at fo the Follum site, uh, the uh, available forestry residues from in that location and, and also demolition wood, uh, you know, we could, we can easily scale up the production of biocarbon uh, at that facility to to uh, perhaps in the in the very few uh, few years uh, take sort of the, the the demand for biocarbon in the Norwegian metallurgic industry perhaps twenty five percent of it so it you know we can basically help decarbonize the uh, the metallurgic industry with with twenty five percent uh, at that at that site so yeah. that's an interesting opportunity absolutely but uh, but Frederick you know uh, Wow also they're thinking big. Um, but are they doing the right thing with wow green metals? I think this is definitely a very interesting track. There is uh, it's extremely important uh, what kind of role biomass and bio waste could play to combat climate change. And um, uh, there is a lot of ways to use the biomass, and, and I used to say how to be or, or not to be uh, <laughs> is is a question here. Um, to, able, to be able to, to produce biocarbon or biochar and to put into the melting industry and also create an a industry reducing the syngas from this production of the biochar uh, fits very well into the value chains we, we're looking into. And, and first of all, remember, 
we're going to need a lot of aluminium, a lot of mangan, a lot of these metals. If we are going to produce all the windmills and all the wafers for the solar panels and so on. So this is this is a part of the solution. And by these products created by Vol, uh, you could remove the, the CO2 impact uh, and the footprint from this melting industry that we need to create the, the future solutions. Yeah, that's great. And uh, Henrik, uh, you know, you're actually doing this with black numbers. Can you explain a bit about uh, the economy behind this? Yeah, you know, I think that we uh, we have, uh, as a business, we have been in, in uh, you know, in operations for many years. We have been very, you know, successful in, in deploying clean tech in the, in the marine industry and then specifically the cruise industry. And... Uh, as we now are moving on shore into several different sort of industry verticals with waste valorization technologies, uh, it is, uh, you know, the, 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 there's uh, there's definitely sort of strong drivers now uh, to to uh, to enhance circular economy and at the same time also to to help industry decarbonize. And I think that what what we're trying to do here is to to combine that. You know the, the the way to maximize the value on waste and biomass is you know to to you know, you know turn that towards an industry seeking to decarbonize and that's what we're doing and it turns out to be profitable 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 for us. Yeah, but the, you talked a bit about the demand earlier. You know the the demand side here is is, is huge, isn't it? It's you know, it's 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 very very large, uh, and you see now more and more uh, industries are. Are trying to to reduce their dependence on fossil fuels, uh, and there are almost weekly you see large corporations announcing a, a commitment to decarbonize or to become CO two neutral with a, within a certain time, and uh, mm. that is uh, the markets are uh, are are huge. I, I think we also need to look at when when you're talking about the markets we will get new biomass that needs to be handled this way. Today we are putting a lot of, for example, uh, uh, f- from from the sewage uh, into into the farming. And this starts to reach levels of metals and so on, so we need to find other ways. So beside being used in, in the process industry and the melting industry the, with the biochar, biochar could also be a solution to fertilize the agriculture and store uh, CO2 in the form of carbon long term. So we need to explore these options. And and you see also a lot of mud from the fish farming is a waste that could be used as resources and so on. So so one thing is that I'm less worried about the potential markets because if we are going to go carbon neutral or carbon negative, this needs to be a part of the solution. Uh, but the big topic here is where do we get the sustainable biomass from? And this could solve what we see comes up with with problems in contaminated uh, uh, biomass that could not be used as we have used it before. Mm. Uh, then this technology represents an, an alternative. Uh, is it important where the actual plants are? Uh, yeah, one, one of the biggest costs with biomass is transport. So, of course, lo- lo- location is a lot here. Uh, we see that in our work with g- doing seaweed farming, uh, you need to have the treatment and the hand processing of that close by where you produce it. You cannot start to transport that for long distances. That's very costly. Mm. Uh, but there is huge uh, amount of biomass post from the forest industry, from the agriculture, from the fish farming, and from from uh, sewage that could be used into this technology and. And there is not so many other options for making a clever use of this. Hmm. So, for example, compared with just making biofuel from from wood, this is a much better option in our opinion. Because this is uh, not going to be the only plant of uh, wild no, metals. No, what we're trying to do here is to create an accelerator, you know, to deploy technology and uh, by sort of taking sort of a build on operate uh, um, position. Um, hmm. But and it's it's very interesting to see now that these are, it turns out to you know the way we see it, it is it's you're making you're able to sort of uh, make these cases profitable today with the let's say the uh, the CO two tax taxation level as it is, uh, 
we see that the uh, the cost of, of feedstock availability on feedstock uh, to run these these processes and uh, in let's say the sites are important where we can valorize the syn gas we can valorize the biocarbon and we can even take out condensate that will be uh, an off taker you know i see that the, you know we see that the petrochemical industry will be interested in the in the biofuels that comes out of the process mm. so 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 today within the taxation system we see today that that uh, these uh, these uh, these um these projects are are economically viable uh and that's interesting to see and 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 another thing is that the cost of co2 you know uh, going forward is expected to go come up and i i i guess you can all have a comment on that but i i think it's I think it will be levelized around sort of the cost, what it, what the cost will be to take the the carbon or the CO two out of the the cycle uh, yeah. mm. in the future, and you know this just creates even better models and more flexibility in us for us in in deploying or mm. to accelerate sort of such the technology deployment by by building a lot of facilities to to produce bio biocarbon and CO two neutral energy. Yeah. You agree? Yeah, you agree. I I think. The most important is that we have a, a versatile plant that could handle a multitude of feedstocks, because um, because we need to to challenge sort of the the real waste and the challenging waste fractions. It will be a competition about the biomass uh, in the future, uh, not only for the metallurgy industry, but but for uh, agriculture, for um, maybe for cement, concrete uh, uh, facilities, uh, and and what have you. So, mm. so in order to tap into uh, less valuable or or more abundant materials uh, like uh, RDF, like um, like forest residues, like even branches and, and tops, which now uh, sort of possess a, a huge um, volume, but is not uh, used uh, at all. Uh, it just remains in the forest, and I think yeah. that you saw that if if only in Norway, I think it's one point five million tons annually that just yeah. left behind in the forest that could potentially decarbonize the metallurgy industry with four percent just if they had could, a big program use that group, some years know. ago where they really showed the potential but of course the at that time uh, the, the the valorization of that waste uh, was not uh, good enough now it could be uh, so, so now we, we tap into new sources of biomass that is uh, sort of not exploited you, you agree on this Fredrik that the prices are just going <laughs> one way uh, if not we are uh, in trouble <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. so uh, yes and, and I think the financial risk to not have alternatives to just do emission trading uh, is quite scary uh, for for many of the players today and by that I mean that that we risk a quite high carbon tax and people think okay we can just go into the market and start to buy this yeah uh, we don't have to sort around we, 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 we buy it from someone else and too many players do that today so that means that the price will be tightened uh, and higher the coming years mm. so to have real alternatives where you really remove uh, carbon out of the life cycle and uh, both have the possibility to store it uh, in in the soil and to replace uh, fossil uh, products into the melting industry uh, is is a good way of use uh, of the bio biomass that we need to to do as use as clever as possible mm. because it's a limited resource. Yeah. So the timing that uh, for establishing this uh, uh, plant is, is is fantastic. You know that's what fascinates me a little bit with WoW because. The pyrolysis technology is, is, is old. <laughs> if you go really back, you could uh, say it's a thousand years old. And it's been a kind of technology that we have had expectations for, because it's uh, if, if you take biomass to burn it in a combustion uh, plant to make electricity, you get electricity, you get CO2, uh, carbon neutral though, but you get then ash. In this process, you get that ash to be a resource instead in biochar. So, so, WoW has a strategy and have the capacity, and have with uh, with the experience by putting these uh, facilities in operation, uh, 
scaled up and industrialized a solution that we have been waiting for for years. So, so uh, the, the, the projects here that will get real-time experience is extremely important also for us as an environmental foundation in Bologna to evaluate what kind of uh, tool or weapon does this represent to combat climate change. But uh, it's cool to see this technology be scaled up and industrialized now. It's yeah. really important. I, I think if you look at the market of biochar uh, prod produced in, in Europe today uh, and the projected uh, expansion of that market, um, the volume plant will actually contribute significantly to the, to the forecasted um, increase of capacity next year. Uh, and this is sort of the chicken and <coughs> an egg type of discussion for for biochar to be a relevant uh, uh, commodity in in rules and regulations and in industry we need the volume and now we are just uh, taking uh, responsibility and, and and facilitate that production and you know that, that's what's actually what we saw you know it it's uh, in norway if um only the Norwegian market uh, within the metallurgy space, uh, they they are cons consuming a, around a, mil a billion ton of, of fossil uh, coke uh, a year, and 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 if uh, if we use Elkem as a benchmark, they have an ambition to become forty percent CO two neutral within twenty thirty. We're talking about sort of you know th th this market should have a, a supply of four hundred thousand tons, and the first. The first step of, of of our production at at Fulda will be ten thousand. So you know we need to we need to scale up this to become relevant. You know for for the industry. So mm -hmm. that's 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 why we create this accelerator to to really move quickly forward. Mm -hmm. Exciting times, uh, guys. Uh, thank you for for joining us here. Uh, and it's fun that uh, green actually can be uh, black. So <laughs> good one, guys. <laughs> and then you can go, go green by black numbers too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>